significant part in the struggle for independence and the birth of Bangladesh. I'm very honored to be here, to have been recognized in this way, but also to be amongst this group of people whose contributions in many different ways many of us don't know about. And I think we need to ask and talk to them more because we could learn a lot. Um, from a personal point of view, my experience here in March 1971, in December 1971, in January 1972, and many months around that, and in subsequent visits to Bangladesh, have had a very deep personal impression on me. Professionally, I feel very proud that I was able to play a part in exposing the massacres that took place here in Dhaka on the night of March the 25th and that myself and a young French photographer who sadly died later in Vietnam and who should also be remembered here today, we were able to escape the Pakistan military and to expose what they had done in this, in this city that terrible night. Um, I'd also like to say that for us, we were young journalists in those days and we still didn't really have a perception, a very strong perception, of what was happening here. But when I arrived, I had the privilege on March the 7th of standing in the Maidan on the race course, on the podium where Sheikh Mujib was giving that famous 18 and a half minute speech. And to, even though I didn't speak Bengali, I understood it. The struggle now is a struggle for our emancipation. The struggle now is a struggle for our independence. Joy Bangladesh. And when I heard that, I understood it, even though I didn't understand Bengali. So that night, on March the 25th, when the Pakistan army moved in and began systematically to kill and to maim and to savage this city, it made us angry. It made us angry because we realized that the Bengali people really did want their independence. And I'd like to say thank you for honoring me, but I'd also like to say I think we should honor the Bengali people who found it within themselves to rise up against all the odds and win their independence with much bloodshed and tremendous effort and spirit. In a small way, I remember the people in this hotel on March the 27th, when the curfew was lifted, who were people of Bangladesh, thank you. I'm proud to be part of your history. We deeply appreciate the Russia in accepting the Bangladesh Liberation War Honor and Friends of Liberation War Honor. It's a very special day for me. 
and uh, a day I'll, I will always remember. I'm very proud to, to have been recognized and honored in this way and I'm actually very proud and honored to be part of such a large group of people who made in different ways a significant contribution to the struggle for the independence and freedom of Bangladesh. So um, it's a good, it's an important day for me and in many ways I've been uh, tied to Bangladesh by events and I'm very proud that I was able to contribute in a small way myself towards uh, your history and to be part of it. Well, I, I think that, um, that people should not be allowed to get away with murder and massacre and killings on the scale of which took place during uh, the 71 struggle. Um, I was witness, as you know, in 1971 to the first massacres and killings in Dhaka and I was shocked by the ruthlessness of what occurred. And subsequently there was atrocities in many parts of the country. I don't think this should become an obsessive uh, political issue dominating everything else, but I think that there is a place uh, in there is a place for, for trials to take place and for people to be made accountable for their actions. So I think it's quite acceptable that these trials should be taking place forty years after the event. I mean, uh, the Israelis have been chasing down uh, people who perpetrated the genocide against the Jewish people during World War II for many, many years. So uh, I think it's quite normal that these trials should be taking place. I, I don't think I, need, I should go into you know, explaining everything I saw, but um, I have to say that the thing that really struck me was that, um, and what made me angry, was the fact that the Pakistan army was trying to take you away and to hide the truth. So my satisfaction professionally and in fact personally was to escape that and to be able to get out and document the massacres. And what I saw, for example, in um, uh, Dhaka University and in the old city and in the Hindu uh, quarter of uh, Dhaka was appalling. It was indiscriminate killing. People shot dead in their beds people burnt alive in their houses, people with no, uh, with no uh, uh, reason for, to be killed. They were just supporters of the Awami League, and yet they were shot down and massacred in their beds. So that's a pretty appalling thing to see. Well, buildings is not uh, symbolic of, of change, it's uh, symbolic of other things. I think real change will come from the commitment of young people and the opportunity for young people to actually contribute and build the economy and the future of this country. Um, clearly there is a huge amount of change going on here and you can feel it, not just in Dhaka but also outside the, the city. So it's very encouraging that after 40 years, uh, 41 years, that changes are beginning to take place. There are still many problems, still many issues that need to be dealt with. Um, and the politicians need to, uh, to be able to tackle those problems.
honor all those who aided in the struggle for the liberation of Bangladesh. It is very important to note that it was the people of Bangladesh who rose up against the Pakistanis and due credit must be given to them for their bravery. It was the people of Bangladesh who rose up. Not only that, it was the Mukti Fauch and the East Bengal Battalions. They all played a major role in the liberation of their country. The Indian Army and co collaborated and together we fought shoulder to shoulder to achieve victory. Victory in Bangladesh was a credit to the people of Bangladesh, Mukti Fauj and also East Bengal Battalion. We in India assisted. I, I couldn't say m much except that uh, General uh, Niazi, um, after we bombed government house, uh, decided, the governor resigned, he decided to ask for a ceasefire. That evening he and Farman Andi went to see the American consul Spivak with the following proposal, ceasefire under UN, hand over the government to UN, withdraw it under UN, no reprisals. And that was handed over to Bhutto in New York on the 15th in the evening. Bhutto rejected it outright and later that night he stormed out to the United Nations shouting that he would never surrender and fight on to the end. That was 15 night or 16 morning. On our 16 morning, I was asked to go and get a surrender. I had already sent a surrender do document to Delhi. I drafted it. We had no response. And all I showed, go and get a surrender. I went to Dhaka with my type draft, unconfirmed by government, of the surrender. So, I, when I arrived there, uh, I was met by United Nations. They said, we're coming with you to take over the government. I said, thank you, no thank you. Park Army had sent me a car uh, and a brigadier. The fighting was still going on between the uh, Mukti and the Park Army. And we had hardly gone a few hundred yards when the Mukti fired at the car. I told them, the Park Army car. So I jumped out, saying Indian Army. So they saw me recognize and they stopped firing. They wanted to kill the brigadier. I persuaded them that the, their government was coming to power tomorrow and they shouldn't, Geneva Conventions held good. So we went to Niazi's headquarters. I had it read out, the instrumental surrender. He said, who said I'm surrendering? You've only come here for a ceasefire. And he went on and on. I took him aside and I told him, it was very great massacre and very great brutality on the park of the Park Army. I come to that later on. I, I told Niazi, if you surrender, we'll ensure protection of um, minorities, everyone, you and your families. But if you don't surrender, we can't take any responsibility. So make up your mind. If you don't surrender, I wash my hands off anything. So I asked him again, uh, i give you 30 minutes. If you don't uh, surrender, I'll order the resumption of hostilities and the bombing of Dhaka cantonment and I walked out. I said, what have I done? We are, he has 26,400 troops in Dhaka. We have 3,000 in Mirpur. He could have fought on for at least two more weeks. UN was in session. And um, uh, when I went back I went on the table, the document was there. I said, in general, do you accept this document? He never answered. I asked him three times. I picked it up and said, I take it and accept it. Then I took him aside, I said, you will surrender on the race course in front of the people of Dhaka, who you Harris raped and murdered. He said, I won't. I said, you will. I've given orders and you will do it. So uh, the argument went on. So eventually he agreed to surrender in front of the people of Dhaka. It's only public surrender in history. I've got him to surrender. I planned the war. I oversaw operations. So I knew what was up. So I told Niazi, you will surrender in front of the people of Dhaka. He eventually agreed and uh, the, the surrender took place uh, uh, as planned. It was no time, a ceasefire was converted into unconditional public surrender. It is sufficient, uh, the only one in history. Uh, so he surrendered in front of the people of Dhaka. Once uh, the document was signed, the people of Dhaka rushed to lynch him. And we had difficulty in 
uh, putting him in a jeep and running away. But they wanted to, people wanted to lynch him. So uh, all I quote is the Hamid Rahman Commission report. It said to General Niazi, General Niazi, when you had 26,400 troops in Dhaka and the Indians a few thousand outside, and you could have fought on for at least two more weeks, why then? The UN was in session. And had you fought on for one more day, the Indians would have to, had to go back. Why then did you accept a shameful, unconditional public surrender and provide a guard of honor commanded by your ADC? He said, I was compelled to do this by General Jacob, who blackmailed me into surrender, who also has a rubbish, he said. And he's written that in his book as well, that I blackmailed him into surrendering. I didn't. His nerve broke. I used a lot of bluff, but his nerve broke. I, I don't know the details. You guys know the details. We have no... I, from the army side, we have no details. Uh, the Bangladesh government has all the details. They know what happened. The law must take its course. He should be tried. They should be tried. The people of Bangladesh are great people. Bangladesh is a rising star. Bangladesh is a major power and will soon be a regional superpower. India and Bangladesh must work together in all fields. Uh, we have common interests and we must work together. I wish the people of Bangladesh also say God bless Bangladesh. Bangladesh.